Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from the world famous Comedy Store main room for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hedgeclair. Yeah, yippee doo da day. How exciting uh, to be back here at the beautiful Comedy Store with you, Brian Red Band. Oh, I love being here with you also. That's right. We've been uh, we've been riding e-bikes together all week. Holding we even rode an e-carousel this week. Oh we bought God. an e-carousel with all the... Uh, with all the uh, money that we've saved from uh, the years of working very hard, we bought an electric carousel with tiny little ponies on it. It took, we got to ride it for 10 minutes and it took seven days to charge mm-hmm. and uh, very exciting stuff. Yeah. Um, I am all stuffed up with delicious Vito's Pizza. I've been going there all week. I tried a bunch of new stuff this week. I tried the lasagna. I tried uh, the Romeo sandwich. Is that right, Charlie? The Romeo. Oh, my God. I ate half of it, took the other half on the golf course with me the next morning. Yum, yum in my little tum-tum. Vito's Pizza, three times a week now for me. I'm becoming a little Italian piglet. Or as it's known in Italian, a pigoletta. Pigoletta. And uh, I'm all stuffed up on caveman coffee, all filled to the brim and uh, energized. And I'm also uh, moderately stoned, thanks to my friends over at uh, Speedweed, the great Gino, the uh, uh, director of operations over at Betterbox Studios, which helped us during this pandemic film some shows when the comedy store was completely enclosed. And uh, yeah, I'm excited about things. We have uh, five people that signed up for tonight's show. We have a guest ready to go. But before we do, oh, how could I forget this? He's holding his own lamplight. I could barely see him over there. Hey, General Bogus. It's already on him. Okay. Hey, look, everybody. It's Ryan J. Ebelt. There he is. Whoa. He draws every single episode of the show, and all those prints are available at ryanjebelt.com. Very, very exciting stuff. And, uh, yeah, like I said, Ryan J., the guest is ready. We got names in a bucket. Everything's ready to go. But before we start tonight's show, let's get a word from the amazing sponsors that made this episode possible for you for free right now. Hey, y'all. Now more than ever, you really shouldn't put off seeing a doctor when you're not feeling well. And I know that with everything going on, it can be difficult to put your health first. Seeing a doctor can be a real hassle. Plus, it's scary nowadays to go in there. There might be people in the waiting room coughing. It's frightening. That's why I use Plush Care. They make seeing a doctor so easy, I do it right from home. Plush Care provides virtual doctor appointments through your smartphone or computer. I just pick a time that works for me and book an appointment right online. I don't have to sit on hold forever to make an appointment or leave the house and sit in a crowded waiting room like Tony just said <laughs> and be exposed to who knows what. With Plush Care, I can be diagnosed, treated, and even have a prescription sent to the pharmacy of my choice if needed within minutes. Plush Care accepts most major insurance carriers and is available in all 50 states in the doctor's care. They're here to help by discussing treatment options and providing prescriptions as needed. And they're available anytime I have questions. And if you need a regular checkup or have questions about mental health, Plush Care doctors are available to help. Schedule an appointment today to discuss your treatment options. You know, I did this, Brian, and it was super easy. It turns out I had a little case of uh, food poisoning after eating some diabolical sushi, but I was worried, and I took care of all of it over Plush Care. With Plush Care, I don't put off seeing a doctor, and neither should you. No more excuses. Make your appointment today. Go to plushcare.com slash Tony. That's P-L-U-S-H-C-A-R-E dot com slash Tony. Plushcare.com slash Tony. When you use the bathroom, you always close the door behind you, right? You don't want random passers-by looking in on you. So why would you let people look in on you when you go online? Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like going to the bathroom and not closing the door. Did you know that your internet service provider, say Comcast or Verizon, knows every single website you visit? And what's worse is they can sell this information to ad companies and tech giants who will use your data to target you. Yeah, it's completely legal that they do that also. It's scary. ExpressVPN puts a stop to this. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel between the device and the internet so that your online activity can't be seen by anyone. I use ExpressVPN on all my devices. It works on everything, phones, laptops, even routers. So everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can still be protected even if they don't have ExpressVPN. And the best part, if you're using ExpressVPN, it's as easy as closing the bathroom door. You just fire up the app, click one button, and you are protected. 
ExpressVPN is the world's number one rated VPN by CNET, Wired, The Verge, and countless others. So if you're like me and believe your online activity is your business, secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash killtony today. Use our exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash killtony, and you can get an extra three months free. That's expressvpn.com slash killtony. And we're back. What an exciting time. Thank you to our sponsors. I love them. I use them. I know them. They're great. You can contribute to the show by using our sponsors' products. Let's start tonight's show. Are you guys excited about this? There are, uh, I don't know, I don't know, maybe 12 people in a room built for 540, and I just could not be more excited about that. Let's start tonight's show. Ladies and gentlemen, your guest tonight, one of my best friends, a guy that I started with, an unbelievably talented comedian. His new album is out and available everywhere now. It's called Take the L, his debut album. Truly one of my best friends, former roommate, and uh, me and this guy got hired around, right around this exact same time at the comedy store. So we were comedy store co-employees, we're co-paid regulars. Truly, my brother, from another mother, the great Matt Edgar, everybody. Here we go. Matt Edgar. This is a guy that I got into smoking pot 13 years ago. I took him to his first Pink Floyd concert. Yep. I lived with him. I was on the couch. He had his own bedroom. And look at us now. Here we are, just two brothers hanging out, mm-hmm. skinny little metrosexual-looking dudes. We've been called gay. I numerous times especially oh, yeah. when you had, you had really long hair when i first met you too yeah, yeah. i was way gayer back then <laughs> yeah very very uh very tight jeans yeah we once got kicked out of a whataburger in texas um because the cop thought that we were gay are you mm. saying oh, yeah the cop thought we, that we were it. gay our first time at a whataburger and the next day uh, our buddy took a call from the chief of police uh, of that police department to try to figure out what happened, and the chief of police goes, "Yeah, my guy said there were a couple faggots uh, fighting in a water burger, so he had to kick them out." Yeah. And we were like pro wrestling fans; so we were like goofing around, like slot boxing each other or something. We were young bucks. Yeah, yeah, one of uh, one of those defining nights. Yeah, <laughs> a couple twenty three, twenty four year old little punklets out there in Texas, and. Uh, we really stood out. Matt had really skinny jeans on, which basically was a crime in, in Texas, Texas yeah. 12 years ago. Skinny jeans was like burning an American flag. Um, very excited that you're here, Matt. The album Take the L is available everywhere, and uh, very, very cool stuff. I'm excited about it. You, f- you recorded that in New York? Yes, I did at the uh, New York Comedy Club. Sweet. Our uh, friend Amy's joint. That's right. That's awesome. Another great, great place. Another great person. Another great club. Did you do it during quarantine or did, was this nope. like before? Nope. I did it uh, about this time last year, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's it been a while to... Uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. And it's been a while since you were a guest on the show. I don't know if you remember this or not, but there's a band on the show, Matt Edgar. And every single episode, they commit to being different characters, and we never know what they're going to be. They've been in the back getting ready this entire time, and they're about to come out right now. You want to know what the band's going to be tonight? Please. Well, let's all find out together as I present to you the best damn band in the land. It's the Kill Tony Band. Jeremiah Watkins, Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez, Chroma Chris, and Jet Ski Jesse Johnson. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Normally, really this is the part where I start to figure out what they are. I don't know what they could possibly be. It appears as though Jeremiah is a uh, homeless version of Khaleesi from Game of Thrones. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, what are you? Oh, wait a second. Are you guys homeless? Yeah. No, we're rappers. Now what you hear is not a test. This is a blanket, not a vest. I'm a blanket, Tony. You're a blanket. I'm a blanket. <laughs> okay, Jeremiah is a blanket. Here we yeah. go. This is very exciting. Yeah. This is exciting. And uh, what are you, little lady? I'm aluminum foil, and I'm here to save your food. <laughs> aluminum <laughs> foil. I'm writing down your names. Aluminum foil. Foil. And then clearly back here we have, what are you, a Christmas present? I'm wrapping paper. Bust out the Bacardi. It's time to party. 
Wow. I can tell you guys spent at least minutes preparing for these rolls tonight. I love it. And then uh, I have no idea what this could possibly be back here. Why don't you give us your name, young boy? I'm freaking saran wrap, dude. You can't tell from looking at me. You don't have a rap or anything like the rest of the cast? I am rap. Okay. Wow. It's official. As we near episode 500, the band is running out of characters. <laughs> Do you hear this before. man's crap? I'm saran wrap. How about that? Hey, there he goes. He did it. There you go. All right. So we have a blanket, aluminum foil, wrapping paper, and saran wrap, everyone. I'm a blanket. Yeah, we know. We got that part. And uh, we have Matt Edgar with his new album, Take the L, available everywhere. We have Red Band, Ryan J. We have Rick Kosick, David Deary, and Lieutenant General Zach Bogus all running around ready to go. So let's start the fucking show. You guys ready for this, huh? Going first tonight, you're about to be absolutely shocked as kicking off tonight's show is a man that a lot of people say is one of the greatest regulars in the history of the show. This is a young man coming fresh off of his first ever headlining gig this weekend. This is a man that writes a brand new 60 seconds every week, has his own defined style, brand new jokes. His work ethic has not, taking, has not taken a single break during this entire pandemic, and we're about to get a new minute from him right now as I present to you, ladies and gentlemen, the big red machine, the one, the only, the great, the powerful, the slow walking, William Montgomery, everybody. Here he is. Really nice to be here tonight. Uh, can you imagine being a VJ on MTV, which is sort of for music television, and then being fired because they no longer play music on television? Uh, bad news, my show on BET got canceled because they're going to start airing reruns of the Andy Griffith show. Uh, I'm so afraid of COVID, I called the cops because I think it's black. Uh, you know the craziest part about Elliot Smith's uh, suicide? Uh, Courtney Love did it. That's a good joke. I don't know how many people get that, but if you get that, that's a hell of a joke. Um, I'm a big baseball fan, and by baseball fan, I mean doing drugs in my parents' carport. Ladies and gentlemen, William Montgomery. All right. Wow. Incredible. I could barely hear you over the sound of the band moving around. Yeah, what the I fuck are they doing in every direction? It is a lot of a lot of noise back there, except for you, Blanket. I'm just a little quiet blanket over here. <laughs> there you are, absolutely. Uh, William, I might have to edit in a new intro. Maybe I give maybe I made that a little bit too good. A killer minute every week, headlining weekend and all that. That was a really good set. Then you come in guns a blazing with an MTV. Everything was like your misdirect today. <laughs> it was your one awkward hard hitter with yeah. no real... Uh, it was cool, though. You know, it's a tough position that you're in. Did, Did you, you get cable this week? I noticed uh, MTV, BET references. Yeah. What is that? I did. My favorite network is BED. Because he's a blanket. Because <laughs> he's a blanket and blankets go on the bed. <laughs> William, uh, what did you do this week? Had the... Uh, uh, Headlining set in Eureka. So tell us about it. I'm sure the listeners are excited to know. They've been following your growth for years now. Your first headlining set. Tell us the truth about how it went. It was fun. I was able to manage. I managed to do 45 minutes. I brought my synthesizer, which I brought on the show before. My synthesizer was malfunctioning. I uh, tried to make it work. It kind of worked. I want to warn you all. Everybody, nobody had masks on. I'm pretty sure it was a super spreader event. <laughs> so whoever, whoever, whomever is talking after me uh, is fucked. I've uh, already started feeling sick. Now, they, they, they changed the microphones between every comedian. Oh, okay, okay. Was this outdoors or indoor show? It was indoors. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was nothing like L.A. They're more lax in Eureka, I Yeah, guess. for sure. They're more relaxed everywhere than L.A. Uh, did, did, did you hear people coughing or uh, perhaps uh, having symptoms of the coronavirus during the show? Were there people sweating and taking their own temperatures? Yeah, there were a couple of black people who seemed really <laughs> sick. 
Oh my goodness, <laughs> William! I don't think we can. I don't think we can put you in the one spot. No, anymore. I mean that's Did not even like a joke. They seemed really sick. And I, like, I, was I like how he how he said he managed to get through forty five minutes. Well, one of his uh, one of the one of the repeat problems uh, is a repeat offender. William, uh, what? One of the catches with him is that he tends to just do the bare minimum of time. So even on an average kill Tony set, for some reason, he usually clocks in at about fifty two <laughs> seconds. Well, is it tonight? <laughs> And I would be really it. interested. Did you record that set? It was recorded. What did you record it on your phone? No, some guy. Uh, <laughs> some guy? No, the guy who ran the bar, he recorded it on a GoPro. Uh-huh. Have you watched it yet? I never watch any of my sets. Uh, we can. You we should watch them. Because yeah. I think I would. What does that mean? I mean, take some notes. I don't want to watch them. Why? Because I think I'd quit comedy. Why? I don't know, because I never, when I go back over my notes, I think they're not that good, and I think, what am I doing out here? I need to be back in Memphis as a teacher. Is Why? That, is that because, I think it's because he's sober when he watches his sets, right? Yeah, you got to get as fucked up as usual, then watch him. Yeah. No, I don't, don't do that. Don't, he has a serious alcohol problem. Yeah, I have a problem. Don't tell me that. Uh, so, William, let me ask you this. Uh, you did the set... What do you think the odds are that you actually did like 43 or 44 minutes and you're stretching it out saying 45? I think I actually did 32 minutes. There you go. I think that's... that's so that's I did 32 right. minutes. You really believe that or are you being silly right now? No, I did 32 William, minutes. William, over here, don't look that direction. I did 32 minutes. 32 minutes. No, I did 45. 45, exactly 45. Yeah, 45, 46. When did you get the light? Uh, 40. Did they say wrap it up? <laughs> All right, m maybe just a regular rim shot after jokes like that, Joel. No, it was fun, though. It gave me a bit of confidence. I, I did, uh, I think, 125 jokes. Wow, that's great. So that I was reading out of my notebook. Uh-huh. And who did you take with you to Eureka? Eureka? Did you go by yourself? Did you take with your girl Erica. Your girlfriend. My girlfriend. Yeah. Did we you, had fun. Did you drive her there? I drove the entire way. I was able to get Adderall. I was able to procure Adderall from a friend. Uh huh. So I was taking that. I got on 70s Road Trip on Spotify. Uh, Jesus. Smoking six, drinking beers. You were drinking beers while driving. Blacking out. What time? What time of the day? What time of the day did you drive there? Uh, starting at seven in the morning. Seven in the morning, and you took Adderall after that. Oh, yeah, I was blacked out by probably two uh, in the cow country of California. And then did you guys stay at a hotel in Eureka? We did. We stayed at one in Fort Bragg. Oh, wow. What was that like? We went to a hell of a pizza place. Was it called Vito's Pizza on La Cienega? I hate Vito's Pizza, so I <laughs> oh wish you wouldn't God. bring that up. <laughs> what do you possibly hate about Vito's Pizza, William? It gives me diarrhea. But you eat it every and Monday. And that racist piece of shit who's always here, I really don't like him. Every single Monday you eat the pizza, though. I really don't like that guy, and I'm looking at him through the lights right now. I'm, I can see. He sees me. I'm looking right at Charlie. He's laughing Charlie, at you. you are racist as a motherfucker. He's laughing at you saying that. Well, I'm glad he is. Normally, I would be defensive of him and uh, defensive of Vito's Pizza, but the last time you called a uh, sponsor racist, uh, we ended up selling a lot of their products and got a bonus from yeah, them. Yeah, I, I, I bought cool. a new e-bike. Cool, I saw a bunch of that money. So Thank you. Money. Well, yeah, no, you're not, you don't get to yeah, see the money. I no. saw a bunch of that money. Thanks. Yeah, in no way would you ever get a touch of any of that money. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> it's an honor and a privilege. Yeah, I get it. For you to uh, be here. It is. I appreciate it. Yeah. I got a bunch of weed. I got a bunch of mushrooms from people uh, in Eureka. Uh huh. Did you have some Kill Tony fans come out and support you? There were. I think that's all it was. Right. No they shit. They sold it out. How that's else all it could was. people possibly know who William? Montgomery yeah. No is. shit. <laughs> no shit. Can you say that? We're on the same team. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. How come you never bring your girlfriend here to kill Tony with you to the comedy store? I think it's because David Lucas uh, talks a bunch of shit about her. Oh, shit. Your own brother in cursive of the hit test. Well, my black podcast. brother. Brothers in cursive. My well, black brother. No, we know he's black. He's brother. a real womanizer. So who's the girl that you brought, the, the hot blonde chick that you've been ha hanging out with all night? Perfect. Erica will see this in three <laughs> weeks. Erica, that is a lie. I came here by myself. I don't know why you say that fucking red band <laughs> why do you do that i had a hell of a week with erica we drove in the car 
Drove for, I don't pot. know, 12 hours. Did you guys have sex this weekend? Good question. Blanket. Uh, <laughs> we, we have sex every day. Hey, we, did you wrap it up? <laughs> All right, I, I just want to. I, mean, I was gonna do it on the second one, but I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the rappers know that you guys have used that exact joke three times, and uh, we we started. Yeah, the but was it used with a condom? I don't think so, Danny. I don't think so. All right. I don't think I was. I don't think I was. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, another very interesting. Oh, how hey, could yeah. I possibly forget? I almost cut this interview short. Speaking of what? shorts, did I get some more? We got another package this week. And Open I it do up. believe it is going to be shorts. Yeah, unwrap that. <laughs> wow. Should we give That's it to the blonde chick or you? It's very exciting. Red band, stop. Oh, you want to read the note? Okay, I'll read the <laughs> note. Kill Tony Crew. Heard William needed some <laughs> shorts. Wow, look nice. at that. Did we get that on video? <laughs> yeah. Red that was incredible. <laughs> Did you get that on camera? Oh, yeah. yeah. They got it. Uh, heard William needed some shorts. I figured I'd take this opportunity to ask for a shout out for my business. I sell streetwear and vintage at Fiener's Freshest, F-E-E-N-E-R-S Freshest on Instagram. Huge fan of the show. Love y'all. Keep killing it. Edward, appreciate it. Thanks for the 2XL, Edward. And he let us know that he also does a shoe and hat restoration. Ooh. So for the uh, for the uh, negative three people that want to get their shoes and hats restored right now during the pandemic, make sure you check out Fiener's Freshest. Thanks, Fiener. Thanks, Fiener. Okay, you're going to go try those on so we could get a little show in a little bit? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, there he goes. William Montgomery, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of my favorite moments of that interview was watching uh, my good friend Matt Edgar's face at uh, at the very interesting uh, diabolical ways of William Montgomery. He's an un- what we call an unorthodox creature. Right. No, for a second I like, am I dumb? <laughs> like, am I not? <laughs> wow, the blonde his, girl and William are fighting right now. Okay, Red Band. <laughs> Jesus. Pull the name out of the bucket. Your first comedian of the uh, people in the bucket being pulled out tonight that we're going to see goes by the name of Nikki Fuchs. Nikki Fuchs. Here we go. 60 seconds uninterrupted by Nikki Fuchs. Hey. Hi. Um, so my dad is a Vietnam War veteran with PTSD and um totally blanking on this joke right now oh my god you make me so nervous tony um anyways so the ptsd dad story how's that supposed to go fuck oh my god i can't believe this is happening right now i hate my life (laughs) um what should i do yeah breathe okay so i'm nikki and this haircut is called the peter pan sexual in case you wanted it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, this haircut's fucking gay. That's what I found out most of the time. Um, it's so fucking gay that, guess what? Bisexual people can have this haircut too, you know? Fuck, I really ruined this. Totally did, yeah. Okay, that's exactly a minute. Nikki Fuse. Nikki, 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 Nikki. What is this PTSD joke? What do you think happened here? Um, I got you make me nervous, Tony. How do I possibly make you nervous? Because I was like, I don't want you to be mean to me. Well, the, but look what <laughs> happened. You're so worried about me being mean. You fulfill your own prophecy. I know. Is fun. this not a real story? No, it is. It then is how can you story. not remember a real story? Because it has like... Um, what do you think is going to be worse? The PTSD from whatever happened with your dad or the PTSD from ha- talking about PTSD <laughs> on this show? Well, I actually also have PTSD. So yeah, yeah, Tony, she really sheet the bed. <laughs> oh, shit. That's a, that's a blanket if you're wondering why yeah. that's funny. Because you sheet, <laughs> sheet the bed from a blanket that stays on beds. <laughs> uh, so let's let's try to figure out. By the way, you know what? I give you a, a, a 10-star recovery there. Peter Pan sexual, gay as fuck haircut. Absolutely. You recovered. You spun right out of it. You lowered expectations and got a big laugh. 
Uh, in fact, that was a bigger laugh than uh, than William got through his entire set. Yeah, but I was like really determined to tell you this. Well, I let's get like it out of you joke. right now. Go right ahead. You've had a moment to think. You've taken oh, a breath. Fuck. You've had months to prepare for this, perhaps years. How long have you been doing stand-up? Six years. Six I'm, years I know. and I you know. blanked out. No, I know. Okay, so, <laughs> so my dad. She blanked it out. <laughs> what? Thanks, Jeremiah. She blanketed it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Blanket. <laughs> Blanket. I got this covered, Blanket. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs> All right. Blanket's Nikki. just warming him up. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That was great. Okay, I do remember Fuck, that it. Was good. Go ahead, Nikki. I do remember it. So I have um he's a Vietnam War veteran and he has PTSD. He's my dad, like I mentioned. And um honestly, Having a dad with PTSD is a lot like having a regular dad. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but like back in the day, we didn't know that shit was PTSD, so we just called him fucking weird, you know? We were just like, Dad, stop being fucking weird. <laughs> stop talking about those dead people, you know? Um, and the deal was when we would go to bed at night, this was like the deal with the family. If you woke up in the middle of the night, don't go downstairs and go pee, or dad might choke you out. That was, like, the deal. Um, it didn't happen to me, but I didn't realize at the time that it was just, like, my version of the Milton Bradley's board game, Don't Wake Daddy. <laughs> do you remember that game? I don't. Don't, don't I wake... Do. Yeah, I remember don't the commercial a little bit, but I don't think... It, I, don't know, I don't know anybody the that guy, ever actually played the it. The guy kind of looked like Tony a little bit, if you think about it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then let I had a tag that somebody guy. gave me that was just God like... Goddamn, I'm not going to let a piece of fucking saran wrap make fun of me. <laughs> what do you mean it looked like Tony? Let me see this fucking thing. I mean, he was tall and skinny. Oh, what the fuck is this? Whoa! That does look like me. I'm daddy! <laughs> Oh, oh wait, that looks Tony like me. Look I can like already you. see the that's, cover of this. <laughs> <laughs> I can already see the cover of this episode. That was joke. <laughs> oh man, that looks like you. Don't so wake much. daddy. That's me. Wow, look at that. You should have played. What? You should have played the game. No, it looks oh, like a horrible game. Still, <laughs> horrible game. I mean, I played all the other games. Uh, yeah, I've actually never even seen or heard that, and I, you know. I'm a board game guy. I, lo you, I love you've games. Never seen, don't, you've never, never heard the heard commercial? Of this. Was like, you know no. what we should do? We should have a special board game episode of Kill Tony one of these days where we just play board games. That's a good idea. And, and we just let people, instead of having people uh, prepare for six years and come up and uh, <laughs> flatline. Maybe we it was, like, maybe it was a trick this whole time so I could get more time. <sighs> so let's talk about it, Nikki. Where have you been doing this stand-up comedy that you speak of? Um, here, I moved here about two years ago. From, from where? Baltimore. Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And your father really was in Vietnam? Yeah. And he's, a, so he's an older guy? He's 69. Nice. Sweet. Um, okay. So he's 69 years old. Is he still with your mother? <laughs> no, my mom's dead. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Did he choke oppity, 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 <laughs> boing, oing, oing. That also makes me hard when I find out that a mom's dead. No, I'm kidding. Uh, how did she die? Um, so she actually died of a drug overdose. Wow. What kind of drugs? Um, she mixed, uh, she mixed, a uh, Valium with a cat tranquilizer, phenobarbital, if you've ever heard Meow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cat tranquilizer. She put that pussy to sleep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hello. Oh, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> but she was a, she was a veterinarian, so it made sense. It made sense. Wait, what, what made sense? She was a veterinarian. She must wow. have done a lot, though. That must. Wait, have she was in Vietnam too. <laughs> no, she was only thirty-four when she died. So. Oh my very... goodness! How old were you when that happened? Eleven. Wow. So, do you think you oy, have oy, more oy, PTSD oy. <laughs> from uh, your Vietnam vet father or PTSD from your mom dying Both. at eleven? Both. Equal. So I you... found her dead, so like oh, I definitely have fuck. PTSD from that. Did you oh put my... a blanket over her face? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> don't mind him, he's a blanket. No, I'm I like making jokes about We dead don't moms. like going on dead people. Does know. she have that dap, that dead ass pussy? <laughs> Jeez. Oh my god! That's actually pretty good. Too. Was she like fr was she freshly dead or was she like yeah. blue or something? Yeah. yeah, she died on Valentine's Day and she didn't feel well, so we like went off for like a whole like our whole regular thing we were gonna do for Valentine's Day, and we came back and me and my brother were like, Mom, we have presents, like let's, oh, and god. we went up there and she was like in her bed, yeah. 
Jesus yeah. fucking Christ. Yeah, so man. don't be fucking mean to me, bitch. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, what can I? Yeah, I mean, that, that actually means that I should be meaner, right? <laughs> well, At least it means, it, it means that you can handle it. You've been uh, numbed by the pains of uh, God roasting you. Yeah, first, that's a great way to put it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, you, you two kind of look alike, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I also uh, have been called Peter Pan sexual. Oh, you have? No. Mm. Um, but you know what? Uh, it's very interesting. Six years. How do you make money? I am a sci- Well, I'm an engineer now. Okay. Were Thought you going to say scientist there? Yeah, for a I was a scientist before I moved here, but then I took a job as an engineer here. What type of science were you doing? Um, I make drugs. <laughs> oh, what kind of drugs? It's full circle. Mm-hmm. Uh, bi- well, I was making biologics, but now I actually make oncology cell therapy drugs. Okay. So you're treating people's cancer. Yes. And they, but they treat themselves. Basically, we take the cells that cure their cancer, like our natural body actually does that T cells, right? And we genetically modify those T cells to kill their cancer after they've received chemo or radiation. And it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked? Yeah, that's the only way they'll, like, the, the, the world will let them use this drug is if chemo and radiation hasn't worked. Oh, it's and really does that work after that doesn't it work? It does. There's about an 80% efficacy what? rate for the the one that we have on the, um, that's FDA approved. Wow. So yeah. if chemo and radiation don't work, yeah. they give you this, and this works 80% of the time. Yeah, yes. why wouldn't they for switch? This, well, because it extends it's their money. life. It doesn't, it doesn't keep them from... This is like when the opener is funnier than the headliner. <laughs> When uh, oh when the when the, when the self therapy oh, is the yeah. last resort <laughs> yeah oh right. oh when that yeah. works <laughs> when okay. the third option yeah, is the best like, option yeah like what the fuck yeah. yeah so it's really messed up um but that's just the way basically biotech industry works in America right now is like you because ha- you make so much money off chemo and radiation stay still, stay still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because we might have to turn off the microphone for you because it's constant it's so noise. annoying you really didn't think this through before wrapping yourself before an audio podcast <laughs> <laughs> or you could just stay still i invented rap okay very good <laughs> that's weird so if if uh say like one of us gets cancer and we know you can we get it from you so it's what in this is really funny because the company that owns the company that I work for makes one of COVID 19s treatments and so people are get constantly getting brushed with like hey if I have COVID nineteen can I like get it from you no damn All right. no and it's and I just want to be clear it's only certain types of cancer you said so. that your haircut's gay what is your love life like what are you into <sighs> I'm bi uh huh yeah I'm bi uh, I'm currently okay bye. <laughs> <laughs> You're currently what? Not being inserted of any kind, like no insertion happening. So. So you haven't gotten any PTSD lately? No, I haven't. <laughs> no insertion of any kind. Does that mean you're with a woman as of late? No, women insert things too. Sure they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> How adorable! Tony. Yeah. Oh God, it's a finger. Look out! We're having <laughs> sex. Whoa. Well, other things too. <laughs> like what? Tongue dildos. Yeah, but a Tony's tongue a tongue realistically only goes what? Two, three on inches how long the max is. into into something? I mean the outside of something is really what the where the, Brian where the tongue knows. I know. Yeah, yeah he knows. Brian's tongue is larger than his No, penis. you don't need to go <laughs> there. You don't need to go <laughs> You ready to get fucked, baby? <laughs> no, I'm oh kidding. my god. Brian has a gigantic cock. I've seen it while we manscaped together with the new Manscaper Lawnmower three At Waterburger. What? At Waterbury. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nikki, what's something we'd be shocked to find out about you? Uh, one thing that, I don't know. I think my tits have gotten like way bigger since quarantine. Let's see. <laughs> Red <No>. band. <laughs> Red band. Come on. Well, uh, actually, these are the biggest boobs I've ever had. Why do you think that is? I'm, I don't know. I'm, I've stopped exercising probably. Oh, Okay. Boobs are bigger than ever. They are. I don't know. Or I have breast cancer. <laughs> wow. Look at that. It's just a, lo- it's just a tumor. <laughs> Do they get bigger? Yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. they cool. Things. Okay. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Jesus. Well, that's fun, Nikki. It was nice to it meet was, you. Yeah. Thanks for coming back Thank on the you. show. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Okay, Nikki bye. Fuchs, everybody. There she goes. <laughs> Uh, 
All right. Look at this. Another uh, another young lady, ladies and gentlemen. Your next comedian goes by the name of Sarah Ross. Here comes Sarah Ross. Here she is, um, Sarah Ross. I once worked at, or should I say, was fired from an Outback Steakhouse. If you've never been to Australia, uh, this place is nothing like it. Um, it's more of a TGI Fridays. They just throw in the word kookaburra every now and again. I was 18, and the 23-year-old manager brought me into the back, and he said, we just don't think you're Outback Steakhouse material. And I said, thank God. <laughs> Because to be fired hurts, but to find out what you're made of is just what really thrives in chain casual dining 20 minutes south of Oklahoma City. <laughs> Wasn't going to be me. Um, the older I get, though, I feel like I understand his decision more. I maybe agree with him a little bit more. You know, being a performer is no reason to explain the bloomin' onion to a customer as a fried onion. So I've done a bit of shame and guilt when you Google how many calories are in it. <laughs> Um, I want to say this, you guys. Dating is hard right now, okay. but dating men in bandanas is harder. <laughs> there it is, Sarah Ross. I had trouble hearing you there at the end. Did you say dating men in Vegas is harder? I said dating men is hard. Dating men in bandanas is harder. <laughs> is harder. Why is it harder? Outback state It's help. just hard to take them seriously. Oh, because they wear those at Outback? Yeah. No, just pandemic. Oh, oh the yeah. bandanas, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. I guess so. Um, so Outback Steakhouse, let's talk about it. How long did you work there for? Um, like six months when I was 18. <laughs> six months when you were 18. Yeah. I like Outback Steakhouse. Me too. It's one of those places where if you can squeeze in there for lunch, you know, it's a place that I would like to go to lunch at, not necessarily dinner. But, you know, it's, it's pretty good. You have a steak, a blooming onion, a baked potato. Yeah, that's pretty much what good everybody season. orders. I yeah. Have my, I have my first blooming onion with you there. You're goddamn motherfucking right. You had a lot of firsts with me, didn't you, Blanket? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I take my blanket all different all restaurants. All over the country. Okay, yeah. that's a blanket statement. What are some other, what are some other, thi- <laughs> what are some other things? <laughs> Dang it, I was saving that for later, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I've invented rap! You've been foiled. <laughs> There she is. All right. So, uh, Sarah, six months and then you got fired. Um, What other jobs have you had other than that? Um, I feel like I had a lot of weird jobs like in high school and college. I've worked at a, I was a lifeguard at a water park in PCB. Um, PCB is? Panama City Beach, Florida. Wow. Okay. (laughs) It's the Redneck Riviera. I, I also... I grew up in Houston, uh, and when I moved back there for uh, school, I worked at NRG Stadium, which is like the football stadium. Uh-huh. Worked in the suites. That's the <laughs> home like of the Houston Cougars? Texans. C- Cougars uh, is uh, the college, college. football. Uh, yeah. Oh, you, you worked for the Houston Texans at their stadium? I mean, I worked for Aramark, <laughs> but yeah, I right. did. It was fun. I mean, it was. I was in nursing school at the time, so I didn't have to go in all that often just when they had football games or Houston Rodeo. I got to work the uh, Super Bowl, though, when they did it in Houston. Very cool. And what do you do now? I'm a travel nurse. Okay. How long have you been doing stand-up for? Um, I started stand-up in September of last year. I live in New York City, so I did it once in Austin. and Where at in Austin? uh, The Velveeta Room. Okay. Um, And I, I enjoyed it. It was a really good time. It was like the classic case of like your very first time up goes incredibly well. Uh Um, Moved to New York. I did it in New York like September through March. Um, And then I've been, I've been off this whole time. So since, since the pandemic, I mean, I was in like, I was in New York. I was working on the front lines for like March through June. And then I was in Texas and then I was in Florida and now I'm here and I'm not working with any COVID patients anymore. Thank God. Right. Right. You Uh, look like a pretty Drew Barrymore. Thank you. you know? I actually, I have a <laughs> joke that I call myself Drew Barrymore if she were on the management track at a Home Goods. <laughs> Wait, if she ran a what? If she were on the management track at a Home Goods. Okay. All right. So uh, you moved from New York to LA? Um, so I'm just on a contract right now. So since, since the pandemic, I've just been doing travel nursing. So it's like. So you're taking care of a patient right now? 
Um, my contract in LA is I don't see patients. I'm working in uh, interventional radiology, which is all like imaging um, and like planned scheduled procedures where they like get a COVID test before they come Everything in LA is about image. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. Yeah. She works in imaging. Yeah. No, I got it. Thank you. I invented rap. Thank you. <laughs> you did? Sar- what Sar- year? Saran Rap giving us a little bit of insight on what's on his mind right now. Sarah, uh, did you leave a uh, boyfriend back in New York when you came out here? Um, I, get, uh, I was like kind of dating somebody a little bit before the pandemic, and it was like a situation of we were like, okay, we have not been dating that long, and we have no idea when it's going to be until we see each other again. So kind of fizzled, but no, I, I didn't have anything serious. You didn't, didn't see him during the pandemic at all? Um, no, <laughs> no, not during the pandemic because I was like, on the front lines, like as nobody wanted to see me <laughs> at that time. I was like shut away from people for months and months. Wow, an American hero on the front lines Thank of the you. coronavirus. So brave. That. There it is. <laughs> Did you get COVID? Did you end up getting it? Mm-mm. Wow. Nope. I've not, I haven't had my antibodies tested, but I haven't had COVID. I mean, I've been tested so many times, I can't even tell you, but it's never come back positive yet. So. Very cool. How about hobbies or fun facts about you? Anything fun that we'd be surprised to find out about Sarah Ross? Um... I don't know. Uh, maybe my my mom's British, uh, so I grew up in like a British family. No. Um, which, <laughs> um, I, <laughs> so I can it, literally hear Joel when he ha- grabs the mic. When he, I can literally hear his thoughts. No, I, I was gonna say I could hear him thinking. Yeah. You should try wrapping some foil around your head, my friend. <laughs> 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 but block that shit out. <laughs> Oh, my God. Joel, what were you going to say? Now I want to know. It's always more interesting to find out what you didn't say than what you no, did, did say. No, I did say. I said, hello. She said her mom's British. I said, hello. Why? Because her mom's British, you idiot. All right. <laughs> okay. Back to you. I invented rap in 79. Oh, my God. Uh, so your mom's British. What else? Um, hello. I know. I'm feeling, like, rather boring right now. Um... You feel like you're what? I just feel rather boring right now. <laughs> and I don't have like something incredible. How about um, sports? F- you know, any special skills or talents? Well, you know, this hopefully one t- one day will turn into it. Um, this is like I'm rather new at the stand-up aspect of comedy. I've like mainly was doing like UCB like sketch and improv stuff. Uh-huh. Um, so that's like. I mean, I have family in New York, but that's, like, kind of what made me decide to move up there. I, like, moved up there with a couple of friends from Austin um, who were, like, also trying to get into comedy and do... In the city. You moved in the city of New York City. Um, Yes, into Manhattan. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Well, uh, Sarah, it was nice to meet you. Anything else for Sarah, guys? Anything? Any any thoughts? Any advice, Matt Edgar, for uh, Uh, little Sarah Ross here? (laughs) 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 These 12 people, I feel like I I came up here to dead silence. Well, there's not... (laughs) Like a crowd, but it's okay. It's just so hard because you're so new, you know, to, to give advice. I was going to ask, too, it, how, when, did, when did you work at uh, Outback? How long ago? She was 18. I yeah, was but eight. how long ago yeah, was that? Yeah, so that was like, a good, that was like seven years ago. It's oh, a long time like ago. 20 years ago? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> seven God. years ago. Do you think you're going to move back to New York or go um, back to Austin? No, New York is the plan. Yeah, like New York's my home base. I've just been traveling because of Why? That. Why New York over Los Angeles? Or I must Austin. know. Um, because my family's up there, like my whole, my dad's side of the family lives in you New York You like your now. family a lot. They make you yeah, feel and good. Yeah, and I like the, I like New York. I enjoy Does your family it. have a lot of money? Yes, they do. You could tell how she You talks. can live for <laughs> no, free is no, the answer. No, no, that's not true. Either that or you read a lot of Harry Potter books. What? No. What does your dad do for a living? Tell um, the truth. Don't he, hesitate. <laughs> he's a civil engineer. A civil engineer? Mm-hmm. For, or like, what do you mean? What does so that mean? Civil exactly? engineer is like an engineer that designs like roads and bridges. Right. And so is he is he like a big deal civil engineer? Civil. He likes to describe civil engineering as like the uh, least glamorous. Of engineering course, I know. There is. Yes, I know. He plays it humble. I know when you quickly answer that question that exactly I you earn, were going to play it. I earn it good humble. money on my own. Sure, sure you do. Yeah. yeah. No, we know nurses make the most money. So during te- the pandemic, so do, I did. Okay. Uh, why? You, wait. Why? How about your mom? How does your mom do? What does your mom do for a living? Um, my mom has in. My mom's been in sales all my life, like in waste. Uh, primarily, so she does. So she sells shit. She, <laughs> she, uh, no, she helps. She sets up recycling, uh, like for large companies. Oh, very cool. Yeah. All right, well, 
I don't know. There's something fishy here. How about that? How about your grandpa? Do you have a wildly successful grandpa? Um, yes. My dad. Yeah, my grandpa on my mom's side who moved who moved the family from England. Yes. Uh, yeah, he did really. He did well for himself. He was a king. But <laughs> no, he was a metallurgist. A metallurgist. Yeah, he was. He designed. He. It, it's like you know the study of metal, the chemistry of metal. So, he like, he worked for Cameron Ironworks. He still has a patent with Rolls Royce. I mean, that is pretty cool. <laughs> there you go. All right, Sarah. Well, so much yep. fun. Nice to meet you. Oh, oh yes, you. blanket. Go right ahead. C- cover this for us. Uh, okay. Uh, what I w- what I will say. Uh, is that a couple times I think it was hard for people to understand you because you, you were s- talking so fast you were trying to rush through your punch lines and if you really stick the land in then it's way more comfortable. Yeah, and you just okay. have a quiet, kind of a quiet vibe to you. There goes Sarah Ross, everybody. On to the next one we go, Sarah Ross. There goes Sarah Ross, Sarah Ross. Hey. Is that Brian Moses? What's up? Make, put your hands together for Brian Moses, hey. everybody. Oh. What's up, Brian? Another, another one of our brothers, show producer, comedian, showrunner, the creator of Roast Battle, and uh, one of another one of our best friends. I think I, I think I'm, I think I'm going deep sea fishing with you in a week or two, right? Yeah. Me, me, you, and this guy. Yeah. What's that? Over there That's right. We're going deep sea fishing. Got to make sure one of those fish don't pull you in there, you little firecracker, you. I'm on a diet. Uh, speaking of on a diet, speaking of deep sea fishing, your next comedian, a regular on this show, an absolute monster, one of my favorite top young rising comedians in the world. It's the great, the powerful, David Lucas. Here he is. Yeah. Uh, it's only rape if she says stop four times. Because everybody knows she says it three times, she really don't mean it. Because she's like, stop, stop, stop. That means keep going. The fourth time is when you should stop. I personally think that the news should only come on once a week. Nobody needs to hear that bullshit every day. Like, CNN should come on once on a Wednesday, like during the middle of the week. We don't need to hear the same old bullshit every day about Trump and Biden. Uh, my girlfriend made me go to the homeless shelter to volunteer with her to cook. And when I get down there, I thought we was about to cook some bullshit, but I get down there and we cooking steak, shrimp, and ribs. And I'm like, uh, I'm about to get in line for this fucking food. Like, why do these niggas need to eat this? Why should they be full on steak? Get these motherfuckers a ham sandwich and keep it pushing. You should not be homeless and get full on steak and shrimp. Give them a peanut butter and jelly and a bag of chips. Absolutely couldn't agree with you more, David Lucas. I mean, seriously, steak and shrimp. <laughs> Why not just stay homeless? That's Bruh. what that's what that's what we work overtime for. They encourage niggas. Red Band and I Red Band and I love eating steak and shrimp. And you know how we're able to do it, Red Band? How is that? Because of the amazing work from our incredible sponsors and let's check in and get a word a little bit more from them right now. Hiring can be challenging, but ZipRecruiter makes it fast and easy. One CEO, Allie, needed to hire for a multifaceted role at his wallpaper company, Walls Need Love. He was looking for someone who was the right fit for his team and culture, but his search was slow going. So he turned to ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology identifies the right people for your job and actively invites them to apply, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. That's how Ali found Savannah Ray. Ali said Savannah's skills and experience were a great match for the role. Plus, she applied within a few days after he posted the job. Through ZipRecruiter, Ali has hired everyone from head of marketing to his sales director to lead graphic designer. But Ali's not the only employer who loves ZipRecruiter. That's right. A lot of them do. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself how ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster and easier. Try it for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. 
That's ZipRecruiter.com slash K-I-L-L-T-O-N-Y. ZipRecruiter.com slash Kill Tony. And we're back here with yeah. the great David Lucas. What's we're up, talking steak and shrimp. He's serving up homeless people. <laughs> so uh, did you really do that? Uh, yeah, I went to... Uh well, it happened before. Right. It's a but, soup kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I went down there to cook, and they had all this good shit. I'm like, damn, I thought I was about to come here and make some sandwiches. I didn't know yeah. we was grilling and sauteing. Well, that's probably old steak and shrimp also. Yeah. yeah. But like, still, <laughs> though. <laughs> it's, it's mafia like, meat. That's motivation for these <laughs> to keep on striving for the bottom. Yeah. There you go. There's the first that <laughs> N-word from uh, oh, David Lucas. Oh, shit, my Lucas. bad. Damn. Is he not allowed to say it? Well, we're working on it. <laughs> Turns out a lot of... Uh, I thought that was the funniest part of the joke. Was the N-word? Well, not the N-word, but the, what he just said following it. It was a good inflection. Fuck. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. Anyway. Yeah, I'm trying not to say the N-word in my jokes because... We getting demonetized and shit. So. That's a, a good thing to probably just to do for your own self because you know you catch yourself saying it. Like I know it word. takes a lot of work. It took me a very long time to uh, <laughs> to teach myself yeah. to stop saying it in public. Yeah, and especially to my mom, you used to always. Right. Yeah. yeah, I'd be like Mrs. Redman, you <laughs> crazy <laughs> <laughs> like that. But instead of that last part, I would say the N word. Yeah. So uh, what else, David? What else in life is going on this week? Uh, I worked a shift. I worked two shifts this Here week. Here at the comedy store. As the door guy, yeah. Back at the door. Yeah, man. They work the shit out of us right now. God damn. We got to put tables up. This is it. Take tables down. You're paying <laughs> dues at a time here Hell at the comedy yeah. store, which is uh, which is uh, accelerated dues. And the comedy yeah. store documentary is out. You're getting to find out a lot more about people that have worked here before and the history of the club. What do you think about that? Bro, like, I got to see Argus Young. That shit was crazy. Yeah. I remember yeah. the first time I saw Argus Young. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't even the Duke of Abercorn yet. He was the no. commissioner of Abercorn. <laughs> and what I'm learning is uh, I thought uh, Richard Pryor was, like, the first big person to be here. But it looks like it was uh, J.J. J.J. from Walker. Good Times. So. Oh, yeah. yeah Without a like, doubt. Oh, damn, man. This documentary teaching me something. Oh, yeah. It Richard learn. Pryor just popped up. Uh, 40 minutes into last night's episode. You know, the club's crazy when you don't start covering Richard Pryor in, in, until an hour and 40 <laughs> minutes into your history. Bro, that... Freddie Shout Prince. Freddie Prince. Learned a lot about Freddie yeah. Prince. He was 19 mm-hmm. out here killing mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robin Himself. Williams. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Matt he, Edgar. Well, he, he shot New the album, arrows. Take the L, available everywhere. He shot the arrows <laughs> at John Travolta. Uh-huh. He did like John Travolta, so I'm learning a lot, man. Because, you know, like... Uh, on the urban side of comedy, we don't really learn a lot of the history, but I feel like that's necessary to evolve as a comedian, you know. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without you a gotta doubt. You got to know your history. Even though Red Fox is still, like, my father. The people yeah. consider it Richard Pryor, but I'm like, Red Fox, to me, is the father of comedy. Yeah. First I, I, blue I think Pryor might say the same thing. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. So what have you been doing for fun as of late? Any, uh, any, anything? Just the uh, same shit at the... The grappling and shit. Uh, yep. I ain't did nothing too exciting recently, bro. Been mm-hmm. been just chilling, working here, coming here, getting up in the window and shit. You know, I love it. How about the time. dietary uh, wise? What have you been? What have you been eating? Still trying to get it right. You know, what I'm saying still pescatarian, man. Pescatarian yeah. that specializes. That means he eats mostly bread and potatoes <laughs> and, some, and some fish. Potato. I've been there before. <laughs> I was a. I was a. I was a vegan for a. Four or five years, of uh, course. hardcore vegetarian. I still ate fit. It was a pescatarian, but I didn't eat dairy. We know you I love was. fake meat. Well, I actually love real meat in my butthole. <laughs> <laughs> That's only though when dildos are not available, because dildos are my number one choice, and then meat, and then fake meat. We have. I've heard shoved that so one. many Beyond patties in my asshole. It's incredible. <laughs> the weird thing is, is that if you shove Beyond meat into your butt, you poop it out of your mouth. We have Red Band's getting hungry. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, nah, Red Band's getting irritated. You remember, Red Band's like the same shit every week. Booty holes and dildos. <laughs> you should see how unhealthy he was, though, when he was doing that. It's know? true, because I wasn't drinking enough water. And my, oh, yeah, that's why I brought this up, is because vegetarians uh, overcompensate, and so do pescatarians. They overcompensate for the lack of protein and right. energy that they're getting from their food. By eating bread and starch right, and right, fucking carbohydrates. Right, right. Would you agree with that? Right. Yeah. You, you eat a lot out of bread every now and then, Tony. Uh, not necessarily, uh, because let me see. My breakfast is normally like uh, an acai bowl or a bowl of Greek yogurt with granola and strawberries. I let a guy eat my acai bowl the other day. 
I'm like, hey, give me that back. <laughs> that's what we my call, butthole. That's what we call bed and breakfast. <laughs> that's right. I say the hardest part is like uh, the hardest part is like you know coming here drinking to one, mm-hmm. then getting hungry and not want to wait until you get home, so you stop and get some bullshit. That's the hardest part. Absolutely. Yeah, I stopped that time. recently. I'm no longer a late night eater, and yeah. boy oh boy, what a game changer that is. I Absolutely. didn't realize that that was uh, contributing to a lot of the hangovers that I was having. Yeah, it was yeah. Late night food. Yeah. Hell causing yeah. me to want to sleep in the next day. Um, meanwhile, now I can uh, I can drink and just wake up still 7 a.m. And I wake up my- hungry. So you're kind of like, oh, it kind of gets you out of bed. Up. Not really. You know, even if I go to bed hungry, I'll get hungry in an hour or two after right. waking up. But I don't I still don't really wake up hungry. It's well, that's what I'm saying, because usually like if I eat late at night, I will have coffee. You mean, and when, not- when, you mean when you eat late? At night. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I'll, ha- I'll wake up, you know, have coffee and not eat until yeah. like 5 p.m. Because right. you, you know. woke up at 3 p.m. But Red, man, you eat dinner. You <laughs> Red wish. <laughs> Tony, Red Brian calls <laughs> breakfast dinner. Right. He's dinner at 5 a.m. Like, you shouldn't be hungry. I, I don't know why everyone thinks I go to bed so late. I, Bro, I actually fall you asleep You post so it early. on your social media. Like, unless you're waking up. Like, I'm going <laughs> to no, post no, no, this no. video from a few <laughs> hours ago. <laughs> no, I, I, I wake up all the time. Like, I'll wake up at 3 like 7 a.m. briskets. I'll wake up it. at 7 a.m. and just, like, be up for an hour or so and then go Bro. back to bed. Uh, David, what's the unhealthiest thing you can remember eating as of late? Today I had cheese puffs. That's probably the worst. Oh thing shit! Ever. How many cheese puffs did you have? Just a little. Look a at little. you! You're turning into one. You're like the kid from Willy <laughs> Wonka. You Violet, like, you, you are. Like, you look Violet. like cheese puff daddy tonight. <laughs> puff daddy. It's hard for me to roast without the n word, so I ain't gonna say shit. <laughs> <laughs> crutch <laughs> so much fun david as always we're gonna have more fun this week coming yeah, up right. there he goes the great david yeah, lucas yeah, everybody yeah. on to the next one we go hey i know what song that was that was nice that sounded nice all right your next comedian goes by the name of joel malams everybody here he comes this will be interesting i know it the one bites the dust. Oh. Cannonball. Went on Ancestry.com. Find out I'm 100% freak. Asked my buddy, what kind of Pokemon do you think I am? Says you're a freak at you. Look at you. I like to think I'm more of an alien Charizard slash Zapdos slash Sasquatch. From Montana originally. Our state animal is the Subaru. I live out of a 05 Toyota Sienna, deliver Grubhub and Postmates out of it. So she's my everything. Be driving around, can't help but to read deeper into signs. No U-turn, no going home, in and out. Don't stay with your friends too long. Subway, thank God for the van. Staples, what I hold my life together with. Budget, I know, urgent care, needed. In an accident, need a lawyer? Call L.A. Jacob. No! Panda. Yes. Blue Moon. Reach for the Moon. TNT. NBA Finals. Bed Bath & Beyond. Date Night to Myself. Target. Hooters. Joel Malams, everyone. Hey! This is where the drums would come in normally. Four, boom. Oh, that would be it. That would have been. That would have been normally. All right. There's no drummer here. Hey Tony, I've seen this guy before. Oh, you have. He's where been at? on the show before. Where, where have you seen him before? Freebasing. <laughs> Freebasing. Oh, that's right. You're foil. <laughs> that's right. Joel Malams, you have a very interesting, unorthodox, really everything. I mean, performance style, look, uh, writing, delivery, everything. Uh, you t- look like me if I was drowning in COVID. <laughs> <laughs> it, is a, it is an interesting look. Joel, uh, let's talk about it. W- tell us about your life. How old are you? Uh, just turned 29 two Tw- days ago. 29 two days ago. Where are you from? Uh, Whitefish, Montana, originally. Whitefish. Wow. All right. Delicious. <laughs> Go ahead. How long have you been in L.A.? Uh, a little over two years now. What have you been doing here? 
Uh, right now, delivering food. Oh my uh, goodness! Yeah, living out of the van. Um, oh, li- keep, living in a van, and you're you're de- you're delivering uh, food in the van that you live in. Uh, yeah, Grubhub, uh, mostly driving around Long Beach. Okay, Grubhub in a van, mostly Long Beach. Have you been on this show before? Yeah, yeah, I gonna, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say you look very. Oh familiar. yeah, how, how could you possibly? Well, I mean, your hair is a little different. You got it in like pigtails right now or something. Yeah. Joel, uh, so you live in a van. How long have you lived in a van? Two years now? I don't live in a van. Uh, yeah, two years out here. I lived in a year in Arizona. This uh, guy's name is also Joel. I know wait, you, what the fuck? I know you weren't here because I know for a fact you were in the uh, back green room talking very loudly about oh, something. Oh, I was peeing, man, but it's cool. I invented <laughs> Who were you talking to when you were peeing? William Montgomery, dude. Oh, that's right. You know what? How could I forget that William's been back there waiting this entire time? I can't believe I forgot, but now I remember, which means it is time to see a little bit of a fashion show. Here's William Montgomery. Here he comes. Here comes William. Oh, my goodness. Look at this guy. Yeah, play it slow. No, William, 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 William. His mic is this. Fucking microphone. God, you are an absolute moron. It's almost impressive. What do you mean? Don't do that to me right there. There he is. Okay, face that way. There it is for all of you that are into uh This is it. this is this is for all you ladies. This is for all you ladies that are into a man that uh, looks like your uncle that still owns a waterbed after all these years. You do, yeah. You still sleep in a waterbed. When it breaks, you repair it. Wow, the angry, drunk kind of version of William Speck. It's very exciting. Someone definitely only did 38 minutes this weekend in Eureka. Wow. This is a guy clearly just bought his first El Camino. What's David doing in here? Get him out. No, he's here. He's Thank a- you, David. I think this look is called train wreck. Yeah. This is a, <laughs> You're this is a very face the camera, William. Look right into the camera and tell them uh, how you feel about things. What's up? I just started believing in Jesus. He believes in Jesus Christ. Can we see? Can we see what that looks like? Yeah, look to <laughs> William, look directly. Can you get a little bit closer there, Zach? Can you zoom in? Right there is perfect. And then a little bit lower. Get, get a little bit of that belly. All right. William, do some jumping jacks for the people at home. Do some jumping jacks. Come on, do five jumping jacks. How many of you want to see him do jumping jacks? Everybody does. This, this camera angle looks great, William. Come on, give the people at home what they want. Come on, William. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Someone's dancing. Whoa. Oh, shit. Keep looking down that camera, William. You have to trust me. Take direction. Oh, my goodness. What a stud. Wow. Look at that. You might be wondering, is that a, uh, is that a, is that a man pregnant with octuplets? Yeah. Okay. There goes William Montgomery, everybody. Really. Really impressive. For those of you that like Adult Swim and things like that, you must love the wonkiness that just happened here. Uh, Joel, uh, what's something that we would be shocked to know about you? I did methamphetamine when I was 17 years old. Shocking. My God. Uh, Joel, it's not you. You're saran wrap tonight, Joel, and you already did that once, Joel. So we're sticking with Joel Malums here, which we built tension for with that last question. No matter almost no matter what he said, it would have been funny. But instead, I'm going to ask it again, and it won't be funny this time because now he's had too much time to think about it. So that tension that was built will not be will not be there this time. You don't have to say whatever you're going to say right now because I just queued up that I'm going to ask him again. So you could move away from that, Mike. You, yep, very good. Here we go. Joel Malams, what is something that we would be shocked to find out about you? Right now I'm working on a lot of artwork lately and I'm making <laughs> stickers. See, actually, it worked perfectly. Uh-huh. You rebuilt that tension <laughs> just like I thought you would. Just like I thought you would. 
Uh, there you go. I'll, I'll, I'll say this story. Uh -huh. uh, a few years ago when I was driving back home, uh, I was living in Arizona at the time, so I was going back home to Montana, and it was like 3 in the morning, and it was, it was like 30 degrees out, and I hit this deer that somebody had already hit, and I just ran straight over it, and I had massive speed wobbles. I was drifting all over the road, and I made it <laughs> to the next town. Mm -hmm. I'm like getting a pizza right now because I'm still alive and uh, there was literally blood all over the back of the car and I go into the uh, car wash the next morning and the next the people there's this guy next to me just looking at me like are you okay I'm yeah like, he thought you yeah, killed I'm somebody okay. the deer blood was all over the back of the car but you hit it with the front huh yeah it was already <laughs> dead and I just drove straight over it and it literally just like shot blood like all over the back oh. of the car and on the top was there any blood on the inside of the car maybe in the back seat uh no 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 yeah. was Did it really a deer yeah it was it was some it, it just i couldn't see it coming it just like two seconds it came into the headlights and there was no swerving or anything so it was probably best that i just ran over the ran over it <laughs> yeah it's definitely always best that you run over do you think in <laughs> retrospect do you think you could have avoided it or was it just un it i don't think so i think it was one of those things people say like don't swerve for a deer because you might go off the road and maybe that was one of those situations where it was really better to just hold on to the wheel and hit it again okay yeah. what are your what are your parents like they are very Catholic. Yeah. Uh, but they're good people. Very religious, still together. They're up there in um, M Montana still. Yes, yes. Living and up and there. you live like uh, in a rural area? Whitefish is not a. Uh, certainly yeah, not a very. Yeah, about 10, 15,000 people there. Oh, very cool. There's like three stoplights. Did in you town. do a lot of outdoor stuff growing up there? Yes. Uh, played a lot of basketball, mm -hmm. played golf. Yeah. Uh, that's really what I you did. You still play golf? I see you're wearing a ping hat. This, uh, you're an interesting. Uh, you're either uh, you. I could tell by your look. You would. Uh, I get the vibe that you'd actually be really good at it. Am I correct? Because uh, you, you seem like you wouldn't be good at it, it, and those are the people that are always great at it. Am I right? You have a natural. Uh, you keep the left arm straight. You follow through. Everything good over there? Am I correct? Uh, you learned when you were young, right? Yeah, I started when I was a freshman in high school. Okay. Uh, so that's really what got me into it was playing then. Do you ever get to play still? I don't, just because I'm really trying to save money right now. Oh. And I don't have my clubs with me. Oh, okay. I'm going to Trump tomorrow at 11 a.m. You have an extra 300 bucks. You want to play? I'm just kidding. I know you don't, Joel. I would love to. Uh, <laughs> well, Tony, why don't you uh, take them? No. no chance. No, we have, uh, we're going for Richie's birthday, and it's not, it's not 300. It's like 250. Anyway, um, so, uh, wow. How about your love life, Joel? You ever get a girl into your uh, Grubhub van? Your house? I have had a few girls in the Ooh, van. Ooh, look at that. Uh, One in the ping, two in the sting. <laughs> what? <laughs> I hear you. It's so funny. Okay, go ahead. Uh, no, I, I love recently, that. Uh, I love that I've the band can Bumble. literally say anything this episode, and they get, drr, 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 and then I say something, and I get you put your foot on the le all the way left symbol. Can you do that one more time? And I said, not with mine. You don't. Oh, okay. That's not the symbol. That would be the bass drum. But you're the drummer, so how could you have <laughs> fucked that up? Nope. The one all the way to the left. All the way to the left. Farther left, except I said just the pedal. That's the hi hat. Sure, hi hat, low hat. I said the pedal. Hit the pedal. <laughs> no, that's still the bass drum. It's a pedal, bass pedal. Yep, and there's that pedal on the left symbol, isn't there? There, forget it, forget it, Joel. Wow, can't even with all the direction in the world, can't even get him to do something that he did he's three got seconds that, earlier. He's got that William Montgomery drink. Wow, yeah. he really does, yeah. but he doesn't no, really take have another the, dude. What, Joel? <laughs> oh my god <laughs> we are watching uh slow not the first time i've seen saran wrap melt down i don't know if you've ever put it in the microwave before but uh okay so you, so you got some action in the van that's cool yes a few times 
Uh, when you're delivering Grubhub, are you ever like really hungry and sometimes somebody will take like only two or three minutes and you're like, fuck it, this smells good, and you keep it? <laughs> okay, so a few weeks ago, uh-huh. this person, and I really try to be just the best person I can be, mm-hmm. and I don't want to steal or do anything like that but this person <laughs> bought Sapporo sushi oh, yeah. and they didn't tip me and Uh-oh. I was looking around for their apartment for 15 minutes and I called them multiple times they weren't answering I'm like I'm taking this so, so that you could see the Hold tip on. before you even deliver it I always thought that was afterwards that you well, that was it. after they didn't tip you because they didn't get their sushi correct on Grubhub, you see your tip first, so it's all... Yeah. Whoa. That's, that's see, the game I'm loyal to the soil. I'm a Postmates guy <laughs> yeah, all the way. Me too. And I tip well as long as I get the food. Right. I like that aspect, too, with Postmates because you have that incentive that to... Okay, wow, so you knew you. he wasn't going to tip you. That is so interesting. Yeah, and it's sushi, like a 50-some dollar meal and no tip. fucked up. Right. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's crazy. I say if everything's horrible and the guy was a moron and didn't follow any of the directions that he was clearly given and really did the worst job he possibly could do at his very simple job, I still, you know, throw him something. But it's only if they don't deliver the food at all. Every single one. What? This one, there's something about it. Right. You know what the worst shit is lately? So they, they do that porch where they drop it off on the porch, which is fine, you know. But they always put it right in front of my door, and my door opens out. So I'll have, like, you know, I'll have, like, drinks and shit like that. And so I have to go around the whole entire house from the back door oh just to get goodness. my fucking You ever food take out. your e-bike around the house to do that? <laughs> no. Chroma said you take the e-bike. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joel. Man, you are so interesting and Thank so you. uh so uh I, I don't even know how to describe it. You He's just, like a Nicolas Cage character. Yeah, you seem like a real character. You're twenty nine? How 29. long you been doing stand up for? Uh just the two prior times here. That's it? Wow, you only yes. perform on Kill Tony? Yes. Yeah, well, yeah, but you got to keep writing and, and trying yeah, things and, and taking chances and write everything down and, you know, get get it going because you have such an interesting, uh, interesting everything. Everything about you is interesting. It's very compelling. So keep keep writing and doing it and find some open mics and do those and stay healthy and safe during this wild time. Was it you that I saw that had the, the one wheel? Are you writing a one wheel? No. Okay. no that, one that wheel? What did you see? Somebody uh, out front, one of, the, one of the people here. Was a it you? Unicycle? Oh, it's you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. there you go. Okay, wow. There you go. All right. Joel, uh, thank you so much. There goes Joel Malins, everyone. Hey. All right. This next young man, uh, we have, uh, we have, uh, he has become quite the um, regular character during this pandemic. We, his incredible jokes, and then we found out about his incredible, uh, passionate relationship with a Latina woman, and uh, it's we've been following up on. It's been a few weeks since we've seen him, and he's back here. Unbelievable joke writer and teller. Here he is, a new minute from Ryan <laughs> Joseph. Here's Ryan Joseph. So my girlfriend uh, broke up with me. She sent me a letter saying she needs space. Something like no less than 500 feet or something. I used to date this uh, beautiful black girl. She broke my heart, so I've been trying to avoid her, but I saw her walking towards me down the street the other day, so I crossed the other side. And then she calls me, and she's like, why did you cross the street when you saw me walking towards you? I was like, I told you, you're not my girlfriend anymore. You're just black. (laughs) Although I'm white, I know what it's like to be a minority. I went to a predominantly uh, Hispanic and black school, and it's a horrible feeling just walking around knowing that you're, like, better than everyone. (laughs) I don't like going on the apps because they always say they're looking for their partner in crime, and when you hang out with them, all they want to do is just call the cops. I'm naturally left-handed, but my dad uh, 
said life would be easier if I learned to use my right, um, but I still couldn't get him off. Ryan Joseph. Lift it up. Step back from that ledge, because you are my friend. Ryan Joseph is back. Welcome back, Ryan. How are you? Thanks, man. I'm doing all right. How are you? Good. Fun jokes. Thanks Good to see you again. Yeah. Ryan is a very persistent, uh, hungry comedian. He loves his spots here on Kill Tony. Takes advantage of it. Uh, writes new short uh, jokes. Memorizes all of them. Remembers them when he gets pulled out of the bucket and executes them uh, right down the barrel. Remind us again how long you've been doing stand-up comedy. Uh, almost two years. Two Damn. years only. Damn. Yeah. And already has had multiple great appearances ask, on the uh, show. Can I ask how old you are? Um, 36. 36. So I have this theory that people that start a little bit later kind of get a this in, in a way there's like a head start yeah you know the, what i'm saying the it's album. more of a mature thing when we were kids we, we had nothing to talk about right and we would be too scared to say like the racial stuff indeed like that but, but that's like really fun it. it's really fun nowadays to like say the racial stuff because yeah especially it's very topical it's taboo yeah, yeah i did taboo. a show the other day at a, a drive-in show at the magic castle and about six or seven minutes into a set uh a um a young black lady in the uh in the uh in the audience screamed from her car that i am white privileged nice. and i was reminded at how much fun it is to uh riff live yeah. in the moment Do you start going after the car like that, that gives you a whole oh, new you're thing goddamn what right. kind of car was it? oh Great you question. mean that 2000 <laughs> Two white Toyota Prius, yeah. fucking garbage car, <laughs> yes. yeah, and uh, really laid into it. It was uh, so much fun. Did, 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 did she get more upset and they had to like kick her out? Oh, or it her? was no, it was unbelievable. <laughs> it was unbelievably great. She got more and more upset. She said, "Uh, you know, I, I go, I'm beating, I, you know, I go, I'm dominating you. You're gonna fucking behave yourself." And she's like, "That's because you got a microphone." And I'm like, "That's right, I have a microphone because you didn't chase your dreams." <laughs> Just rolls up her window. He's Starts here. turning on the windshield wipers. Yeah, yeah nothing <laughs> helped. Yeah, I went to um, this ocean mic, and it was kind of like PC, I could tell. So I Pacific tried Coast? Uh, yeah, right. PC comics <laughs> on the PC. Thank you, Joel. And I could tell wow, it was like that. pretty, uh, wow. it wasn't my crowd, so I tried to do my most offensive jokes, and one, crop, one joke did not go well. Yeah, sometimes it's fun to lean into it if you, you, you t- detect it. You yeah, know? I knew it was good for me just to do it. Can I tell the joke? Could you guys tell me if this is a good joke? Absolutely. It goes, I don't like girls that wear lots of makeup. I like them if they can just talk like they're black. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, it's a good joke. I don't know. They didn't like it. So uh, let's talk about your actual love life. Um, oh, let's, let's catch up. How's that been going? Well, you know, man, it sucks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's the new I, updates I on it? To, uh, we're broken up. Okay. Yeah, we're broken up. It's just been like off and on um, fighting and all sorts of shit. But she pulled some shit that, you know, like, because I'm addicted, dude. I've been going to codependent anonymous meetings, taking care of myself. Really? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she, I left my journal over there the other day, dude. Oh, my God. The other day. Well, wow. not the other day, but, you know, like, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. And she fucking read it. Ooh. She called me. She's like, I'm reading your journal. And I had a list of like pros and cons of why I should leave this. Place. Oh my god! First <laughs> of all, <laughs> why would you? Do that? Why do you have a journal? <laughs> Second of all, why did you take it, it to her jokes. house? Third of all, how do you forget that amongst all things? I know. Ah, it's like I left my safety deposit box over this girl's house who I have been fighting with for Wait, months. So you write your jokes in the same journal as you write like your diary. <laughs> well, so you'll have a long thing about like the day and what you went through and it's like emotional and then something about black people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I don't, really, yeah. I don't write like the... Like when I write, it's usually like stream of consciousness. And whatever joke pops out, then I'll write it down. But I, I was told by I should write pros and cons of because I'm like been confused, dude. Because yeah. like, mm. so and she did not like what she saw. What were some of the cons that you had written down for her? Um, one was well, I had written something called like she has a weird P. P. Like P, the letter P. Uh-huh. And I think it was, I was trying to say personality, but she thought I was saying she has a weird pussy. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. And so I had to convince her that her pussy's fine. But it's her personality. <laughs> well, right, <laughs> yeah. Look, babe, it's not your pussy. Yeah. She'd rather it be it's, your personality. It's your whole being. It's yeah. who you your really name. are as a person. Yes, it's, She's like, you promise? Wow. So she was less offended that it was her personality than her pussy? She, yeah. kn- she knows she doesn't have a great personality. Or yeah. pussy. Yeah, right. yeah. The pussy's the only thing that keeps... That was in the pro column. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, there was like, you know, gives us a great head. Ah. Um, oh. That was in the pro. That's sweet. You got to consider that. That was first. Wow. That's first. <laughs> Hell yeah. And uh, yeah. Absolutely. But uh, no, man, like she lied again about some shit. Uh-huh. Like she, she's just like one of those people that can just look at you in the eye and lie, right? And totally be okay with it. Yeah. And it freaks me out. She's like a sociopath. But right. like, I didn't find out she was a fucking liar until like I was already into her. So right. She Did you get your journal back? Oh yeah. Well, at first she's like, I'm gonna throw in the dumpster unless you come over, because I was like, it's over. You read my jokes. Those are my <laughs> sacred jokes. <laughs> and, um, she's like, How you been surviving during this thing, Ryan? How do you make money again? I work from home, working for this liberal university. They That's make right. me like create courses on like fucking intrinsic bias and all this bullshit. And um, yeah, I don't believe in any of it. I don't care. And right. um, and I make money that way. And yeah, fucking lockdown sucks, dude. I hate it. It needs to open up. I hate it all. I've learned to hate Democrats. Yep. Rules. I hate them all. There you go. Very good. I'm I sorry. Love, that, I love that you care. said it. Not me on this episode. Very good. Where uh, are you from? Uh, originally Florida, mm. but I started stand up like actually four years ago. I did like stand up at the Comedy Underground. Oh yeah. And um, I always wanted to do it again, but I didn't do it every day until I came about out here like two years ago. Yeah. So, but I went back to Florida to like. And you're pushing as hard as you can. Yeah, even right during now. the pandemic, man, there's yeah. been all these like so-called comics wearing their masks and jerking off on Zoom, mm-hmm. telling like giving us shit because we're like, we've been performing during lockdown. Right. Like death threats, bomb threats, like yeah. craziness. Dude. Yeah. People are but people spent, are getting shit shut down. It's annoying. I've been reading yeah. about it. Yeah. Like, it's they, absolutely ridiculous. It's like that's why it's scared. important to vote on November third. They're scared of a virus. They've never seen a virus before. Right. A hundred percent. Um, what would be something like what's a hobby or something that you do when you're not having uh, arguments with your girlfriend or writing stand up comedy like what else one more thing that you're into you cook you do anything I play guitar I sing oh, wow. horribly oh really can you yeah. sing us something sing us a little no, song just I give sing, us one I, line I sing horribly though just give us one why? line just sing a song you why know look I... right into that camera and sing just a cappella. absolutely any line of any song any if, if you're any... watching this fuck you I know who you are. <laughs> you read my journal. Sing it, Ryan. That's sing a, it. That's as good as it oh, gets. Oh, Jesus, Ryan. I thought you said you sang terribly. No. I wanted to hear terrible singing. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, Ryan. Well, fun times. Good to catch up. Great jokes. There he Thanks, goes, Ryan, Ryan Joseph, like everybody. Ryan <laughs> Joseph. He does the jokes and then walks away. All right, one last name in this bucket, and then Michael Lair. But before, uh, yeah, before Michael Lair, let's get this guy up here. This should be interesting. Um, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Phil Iwinski. Here he is, Phil Iwinski. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm uh, mostly, mostly here to juggle, but I just wanted to share some life-saving advice that our genius fucking governor uh, shared with us, I think, on, like, a few days ago. He said, he said uh, make sure you put your mask on in between bites. Like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, no, we're, like, we're not doing that. What if you're eating wings? Can you imagine, like, like each wing takes about two to three bites, and then, like... The mountain of paper towels is just like, fucking blow it out your ass, Newsom. We're not doing that. And it's not backed by science at all, either. Anyway, fucking Ryan got me fired up. Uh, but let's do some juggling. Have Here's some juggling with Phil Iwinski. This is very exciting. Whoa. Wow. Look at that. Through the legs. Oh, my goodness. That is impressive. Yeah, zoom out there, Lieutenant General Bogus. Look at that. Whoa. Whoa. 
<laughs> this is Kill Tony during a pandemic. They said it couldn't be done, but we have a juggler here with glow-in-the-dark bowling pins. Hey. Look at this. Absolutely incredible. Wow. My goodness. Wow, that is some incredible juggling, Phil Iwinski. Hey. My goodness, you're, you are, I've never seen a, 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 most jugglers are ugly guys, and this is a good looking guy. You're like the Tom Brady of jugglers. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate that. That's you're a, a good looking guy, too. Oh, thank you, Phil. Are we, about, are we I think he's, I, he's about to juggle your balls. Tony. I think I'm about to have a, uh, someone, I think I'm about to have a bowling pin in my ass tonight, everybody. <laughs> can you juggle on the one wheel? I can, yeah. Oh, can, uh, can we see some that? of that? Yeah. Oh, my shot. goodness. Yeah, let's get some more circus music. Hey. Da, 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 da. Used to be 600 people in the room, sold out every week. We used to do massive theaters, and we were popular. Now this is what it's come to. We're all sitting here watching a guy. Uh, hey, whoa. He's got the bowling pins and a unicycle. We're having fun. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Wow! Ooh la la! Matt's like, I shouldn't have had that acid before the show, man. That's My badass, man. My yeah, goodness. It's hard on carpet. <laughs> well, I times have changed. Brian just said, "That's badass, man." <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, like an e -bike, it's but pretty it's sweet. One wheel. <laughs> yeah, I, those one wheel things are scary as fuck. Do, uh, oh, do you go on a lot of group rides? Well, before the pandemic, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a uni e cycle. I've broken a rib. I've like, yeah. I've broken all kinds of bones doing crazy How, things. Because those things go fast. I know there's like oh, some yeah. of them go faster, like 60 to 80 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. Russians are like jailbreaking these things yes. on the highway. 80 oh, mile fun. an hour uh, <laughs> no, unicycle? We, yes. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. How fast have you gone uh, on a unicycle, Phil Iwinski? Well, this thing tops out at 30, so I really? I'll cruise at 30 on oh it. Oh, yeah. my God. Where do you do that at? You go to, like, a track or something? No, I mean, I'll just take it to the beach. I'll take it here. Yeah, a lot of uh, e-bikers uh, and those things get together and, like, have these group rides, and they'll yeah. just, like, take over, you know, Sunset Boulevard and, like, go Whoa. around everywhere. Wow. It's pretty awesome. They're so fun, and they're, it's like a penny to the mile as yeah. far as, it, as, like, energy efficiency goes, so all the... If hippies will like that shit, right? Wow, a penny to the mile. Look at that. So, Phil, what's your love life like? You're a good-looking guy. You're out there juggling. You're on a unicycle. I mean, I'm drowning in it like usual, but, I mean, even during the pandemic, no. It's uh, it's it's weird, um, but I've gone on some hinge, hinge dates, actually. Uh, so I've been talking with this one girl uh, who I, I like a lot. It's uh -huh. been going well. Yeah, what have you guys been doing? You've been hanging out? You've been watching Netflix together? You've been Our... Uh, we Crap. actually we went and picked up trash on one of our dates. Believe it or not, it was like the most sappy shit ever. But it was like, like the world is burning. We're like, all right, let's just like do something. Like we're so helpless in this fucking thing. It's like, so yeah, we picked up trash one date, and then I don't know, movie night. Like, I think we went to Bakari for a what for some shit. Isn't that a place? Bakari on. It's like a beer garden. I don't know. Oh man, I didn't know a juggling unicycle. Never mind. So when you picked up trash, did you get any well, action blanket after that? Just blanked it. Um, <laughs> Blank it. You blanketed it out. Yeah. Yeah, no, we, we've hooked up. It's been, I mean, but we took it slow. You, the, the, you, that's the way that you make love slowly, romantically. The right way, yeah. You look at her in the eyes deeply in the missionary position. Damn right, yeah. Wow, look at that. Yeah. I, like I don't want to be a third wheel, but I have a... <laughs> <laughs> So, Phil, tell us how you learned to uh, juggle and unicycle and all that. What ended up happening there? Well, I was homeschooled, so there wasn't a lot to do. Um, like, I was, uh, I was rollerblading, juggling. Like, I wasn't allowed to play video games, so I just got really good at Is juggling. rollerblading the gateway drug to unicycle? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, but it was like, I was always a show-off, always wanted to, like, I don't know, be better than everyone at everything. So. Right. Juggling. Um, so when I like got stomped on in basketball, but the sport of basketball is just too fast for me, um, I was like, I got to find something else that I can rise above and still showcase the. What else are you good at? You play any musical instruments or anything? No, music's like the only thing I didn't really dabble. Right. In. How about uh, other yeah. sports, other things, anything? Oh be yeah, surprising? play all the sports. Okay. Do uh, oh yeah, dunk on people all the time. Oh, that's they great. They took. 
the rims off the hoops at I Pan know. Pacific. I know. Because they don't have a bunch of healthy basketball players. I know. Oh, my God. That's my park, and it's very, uh, very, very disappointing this, what's going on over this, there. This they took the basketball hoops off of the uh, – uh, they took the rims off yeah. of the backboard. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, they allow giant rallies where people scream things, which is how the disease is spread by vapors in yeah. the air. So that people scream things, and then they repeat the things that they scream. One of the main things that they scream at these rallies is no justice <laughs> with that noise, no peace. Both of these things end in sounds that create vapors, except they're yelling it. I but it you're not, but you, they took the rims off of backboards so that people that exercise, yeah, exercise, exactly. exercise. Wait, in can't, America? Can't exercise. I thought they were chanting, go Lakers. Well, they chant that too. <laughs> Funny enough, the same people that chant those things also chant go Lakers and go Dodgers. Can you imagine if Arnold wow. was still like governor? Soviet Russia. He'd be telling people to get sunlight and eat well and be healthy. Uh-huh. And then it's like, this mask is like, you know, the best protection from this virus is, is your fucking immune system. Yep. Oh. And they're like, hey, make sure you put the mask on in between bites. Are you fucking kidding me? CDC That's just crazy. released an so amazing insane. statistic oh, yes. today that uh, no news <laughs> network is talking about. My favorite news network, no news network. Uh, uh, that it over, I think it's uh, 75 to 80 percent of the all the most recent COVID cases, 75 to 80 percent of them are people that always wear a mask. What is this, Nazi Germany? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, no. It's no. pretty crazy that yep. the people that wow. are wearing the masks always are the high majority of people getting it. Pretty like wild. Probably because they're constantly touching their mouth or, you know, and like moving it. And well, yeah. No, it's also because they're probably not applying common sense, thinking that this uh, piece of cotton will, uh, exactly. will, yeah. will do something. Right. Um, meanwhile, it escaped a, uh, a level five bio laboratory. So... Exciting stuff, though. It makes people feel special wearing the cotton thing. It does. Doesn't it? Saran wrap? Yeah, I want to know when Tosh.0 is coming back. <laughs> why, why? What does that have to do with anything? It looks like oh. Daniel Tosh, but like kind of oh. fucked up a little bit. No, I think... No, he's... I don't, yeah, he's I'm not really saying good. he's a good-looking guy, Joel. You all right? Yeah, thanks, Joel. <laughs> yeah, ju- Joel's hey, just... you're weird. welcome. When did juggling become cool? <laughs> uh, I on, also, honest, are you a hack around the other jugglers because you, your shit lights up? Honest to God, uh, I think I think Phil Iwinski made juggling cool. Yeah. Before this, I'm like, I don't know, man. And I then, like juggling. And then well, and I then like he, the style of shitting on Newsom and then following it with yeah. juggling. Yeah, very rarely do you have a young Republican juggler come in here. <laughs> <Yeah>. and, uh, <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not Republican. I know, yeah. I know. I'm just yeah. kidding. But and, and anybody Politics with any common sense could say that this, uh, this current state. Has your, uh, the girl you're dating seen the juggling? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. You mean uh, when she there. fell in love? <laughs> <laughs> no, we were just juggling at the park the other day. She oh, was filming me. That's awesome. And, yeah, and you go to Pan Pacific stuff. Park. That's your park. A few times a week. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Well, I'll probably see you around there sometime, Phil. Tony yeah. will be in the bush. There that's me. I'm in the bush. What am I look. doing in the bush? He's got a little cup like right cup. outside the bush. You put a little money in there. You go in the bush, get some, come right out. Oh, you're saying that I do gay <laughs> sex things <laughs> no. in the bush no. at the park. Okay. No. I'm just trying to... <laughs> Get a grasp on exactly what you were hitting. <laughs> no. together. So you put, I have a cup you out, have a cup. and then there's a bush. And then and you, you put see, a So money. if you see a cup sitting next to a bush, you put money in that bush, and then I come out from behind the bush, and I suck your cock. You know, you know, come on in. Oh, I nice. invite him into the bush? Yeah, come on in nice. the bush. I invite him into the bush, and then we do gay stuff. But and then, but I keep the cup out there for some reason. No, no, you you collect it. <laughs> oh, I take so you put money in the cup and then the cup disappears and then I come out and I go. Yeah, Does on. he put the mask on in between? No, the, bites? Best, the, the best the best part is after the whole bush sequence, he leaves on the unicycle. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's off it. Into the sunset. Very elaborate hookup, but that's Pan Pacific. Well, Phil, I love your style. Anytime you have another minute uh, that you want to talk about something passionately, I know that is this your first time doing stand up? First time. Yeah. Look at that. Absolute cherry popping fun we're having uh, with Phil Iwinski, a juggler, a unicyclist, and uh, any other tricks you ever want to do or talk about, come back anytime, Phil. Hell yeah, I'll juggle knives, fire, whatever. I'll bring L- it. Yep, knives and fire next time. Even though you dropped uh, three bowling pins in 60 seconds, I, uh, let's raise the stakes. Let's go knives and fire here, everybody. There he goes, Phil Iwinski, everyone. There he goes. All right. Na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na
This is it. It's everybody's favorite part of the show, ladies and gentlemen. It is a special time where uh, we check in with one of our favorite human beings on the planet, an incredible regular here on Kill Tony. And he is not present tonight. Uh, He is uh, still in uh, Wyoming, and he uh, sent us in something to check in with. So this is the uh, set that was sent in by the great Michael Lehrer. Here we go. I, I worked in restaurants so much that once in a while, like, I'll become a manager. I'm like, okay, I'll take all those keys. You mind if I steal all the time and fuck in here? <laughs> you, know, you know, Hollywood, Hollywood does not have a monopoly on cocaine, all right? Because I'll tell you this much, Matthew Perry ain't got shit on the general manager at CPK Burbank, all right? <laughs> Because you cannot talk about Thai chicken pizza all day and not do some fucking cocaine. (laughs) I grew up in Queens, uh, and I've I've always been, I was always White Mike, you know, I was just like that guy in junior high, uh, IS-237, because in New York the schools sound like jails. Um, uh, But uh, I I was always into rap music, and I feel like my lifelong... uh, Interest in lap, rap music made me super gluttonous and made me horny as fuck, all right? I just, I just want to put it out there. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in an awkward position where, uh, you know, I don't say this to be cute or clever or think this is a real funny joke, but, like, one of my favorite songs has the N-word in it. It's like, that's like, you know, it's like my joy is my cage on that one. And, you know, if someone asked me, like, well, you know, what's the name of your favorite song? I'd be like, oh, yeah, it's uh, Bobby Schroeder, Hot Lightning! <laughs> it's like, what's wrong with you? Like, I just asked you a simple question. You can't answer a simple question. No, 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 it's not, no, I don't, I'm, I, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm sorry, my favorite song has the N-word in the title. It's just, but it's, I mean, I should be able to say it. It's my favorite song. It's obviously not bad. It's just, you know, it's Bobby Schroeder, Hot <laughs> Uh, I think I think 90% of my problems in life are caused by bad breathing. Which sucks, because it means the fucking chiropractors were right. You know? And they fucking are right about most of the shit they say, but they're so condescending. Always asking you what your shits look like. Don't judge me if you study pictures of shit all day to know what they mean. I'm an Armenian birthday party catering waiter in Glendale. <laughs> the Armenian capital of the world. Armenians are amazing. I love them so much. I never want to work for them again. But uh, at Armenian birthday parties, they're amazing. It's family style. There's the, sh- the, the table is covered in the most amazing Mediterranean spread you've ever seen. When it comes to like drinks, there's a bottle of tequila, a bottle of vodka, a bottle of whiskey, Pellegrinos, a pitcher of water, and a pitcher of Coke. So it's like Scarface and Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> and, and, and between every course, they dance. And there are no wallflowers at an Armenian birthday party. Everybody dances. Everybody, it's amazing. And then they sit down, the band stops, the lights come up. They eat another course of meat, like all that fucking dancing never happens. Thank you, I'm Michael Lair. Creative force, Michael Lair. Follow him at Michael Lair Comedy. Go to michaellaircomedy.com. Check out everything on his website. Let's check in with the drawing, tonight's drawing from Ryan J. Ebelt. Let's check it out here. What do we got? What do we got here? Can we, uh, Wow, look at that. Wow. Oh my goodness, that really looks like Matt Edgar. That Dang, looks like wow, Red Band. Cool. That looks like me. Wow. Is that, that like is, in a skull? Is that kind of like a... That is. That's a fucking a lamp? skull, man. Ryan J. E. Belt is on a whole nother level. All of his prints are available at ryanjebelt.com. Uh, this one is unfucking real I think I might buy this one myself. We'll see what happens here. I got to take another look at that. Um, ryanjebelt.com for all the prints. That's the real uh, That's the real bread and butter of uh, Kill Tony merch. There's also some shirts available at his website at 
DeathSquad.tv as well, and RyanJBelt.com. Thank you, Ryan J. E. Belt. How about a big hand for Matt Edgar tonight? His uh, new album, Take the L, available everywhere. This is a young man that uh, I've worked with for a long time. What else, Matt? You want to plug anything else? Your social media or anything? Just go at Matt Edgar on all things. And that's uh, Matt with one T, M-A-T, right. Edgar. E-D-G-A-R. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you, Red One man. more time for Matt Edgar, everybody. Yeah. How about a hand for Jeremiah Watkins, the leader of the band? Jeremiah, go ahead. Tell us uh, tell us what you have going on. He has a new album coming out, his debut album coming out in December. Yeah, debut special coming out on December 8th. And uh, uh, I have a new merch store at jeremiahwatkins.com. Check that out, and I'll be in New York the first week of November. Oh, yeah? What are you going to do in New York the first week of November? Uh, I'll be out there doing some podcasts and shows. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very cool. All right. How about a big hand for Jet Ski Johnson, everyone? Foil. Picked her moments tonight. Hit grand slams, as always. What else is shaking, Jetski? You have ornaments for sale yes. available at jetskijohnson.com. I love the ornaments. I bought 25 of them myself. Just so I thought you bought 30 of them last week. 30? Oh, my God. I've got to get back to the workshop. <laughs> Make some more. Jetskijohnson.com. Thank you. We love Jetski. Incredible stuff, Jetski. Thank you. How about a hand for Chroma Chris back there? <laughs> Chroma, what do you think about tonight's episode? I think we about covered everything, Tony. Hey, Chroma. Chroma's got a new uh, music video out for his sponsor, Orange Amplifiers. That's out there. Uh, Sweet. On YouTube. Yeah, it's super cool. That's awesome. That was uh, that was some of the Kill Tony family helped him out with Rick? that. The great yeah, Rick, Rick. Kosick, uh, Keel Yulberg, Van Corona. And who else? Am I missing one there? Who's the other guy? Keel and uh, yeah, Van Corona. And there's Joelberg Joel Jimenez tonight, everybody. At times, urinating while talking loudly in the main room, moving around a, a lot, very loudly, not really picking the correct moments to yeah. speak or make jokes at all. Very awkward throughout the entire episode. What's going on, Joel? Nothing, dude. Bring back rock and roll, dude. Have fun. Love each other. Peace out. There he is. He's mostly sorry on social media and on the podcast and on tonight's episode. He's mostly sorry. Uh, <laughs> Red Band? Check out my virtual uh, reality podcast, Virtual Red Band, or, or show. Uh, it's on uh, YouTube.com slash Red Band. I do it about three or four times a week. Absolutely, he does. And I have a Patreon. It's a roast school. Very exciting stuff. Jeremiah was on last week. Just did a crowd stream yesterday. Uh, and fun stuff's happening over there. It's Patreon.com slash Hinchcliffe. And... Uh, more fun uh, Kill Tony stuff. It's got to get even better soon. I think good news is coming right around the corner as far as perhaps performing in front of a live audience yes. in some capacity. I'm sure it can only get better. So stay tuned for that. Thank you, everybody. Good night. <laughs>